the former St. Francis Monastery building at Camp Alvernia, in 1895. Historical marker outside Camp Alvernia with a tribute to Vince Lombardi. Camp Alvernia is a non-profit recreational summer camp in Centerport, New York on the north shore of Long Island. The camp is located on the east shore of Centerport Harbor, on the Little Neck Peninsula. It was founded in 1888 by the Franciscan Brothers of Brooklyn, who still run the facility now, over 120 years later. Alvernia was the first, and is now the oldest Catholic camp in continuous operation in the United States. Camp Alvernia is currently a day camp that serves 800 to 900 children ages 3 to 14 from all religious backgrounds, and also continues to serve as a retreat for the Franciscan Brothers. The camp offers boating and sailing activities, land and field activities, and swimming in four pools. Scholarships are also awarded each year to families in serious financial need. Originally built as a summer retreat for Franciscan Brothers, the 18-acre facility later became a residential camp for immigrant children living in New York City, who slept in tents until cabins were built in the 1930-40s. It was originally named Mount Alvernia after the mountain in Italy where Francis of Assisi is said to have received stigmata. Funding for the camp was raised by redeeming Kirkman soap wrappers, each having a value of two cents. Camp Alvernia was founded as a residential camp for boys. It was a co-ed sleepaway and day camp as early as the 1980s. Boys and girls, ages 5 to 18, could go for either three or six week periods of time. Girls traditionally stayed in the dorms attached to the main building, brother residences, and dining hall. There was one room for younger girls, one room for older girls. Boys stayed in traditional cabins with names such as Nest, Den, Bayview, Shady Rest, Stagecoach, and Seaside according to age. There would be a weekly campfire for all sleepaway residents. Weekends had a more relaxed feel and a lot more freedom in activities. At the time of its 100th anniversary, it was still run as a simultaneous residential and day camp. Residential students would be awoken by a reveille over the campus-wide loudspeaker, meet for breakfast, and then break into their day camp groups, as the day campers would be bussed in from local Long Island towns and vans. Keeping with the camp's theme and location, the day camp named its various age groups after tribes of the Iroquois nation. The youngest campers were called the Oneidas, followed by the Mohawk, Huron, Cayuga and the Seneca. The same names are used to this day, although the age groups they refer to have changed. Cayugas are boys and girls who completed pre-K and kindergarten prior to the start of camp, Oneidas are first and second graders, Mohawks are third and fourth graders, Hurons are fifth and sixth graders, and Senecas are seventh and ninth graders. Historically children were also further separated within their group designation as girls groups and boys groups, throughout the day there would be friendly competition within the designation. Within each particular age group, campers would be assigned to a particular number within their group for instance there were Seneca girls 1. Seneca Girls 2, Seneca Girls 3 A very detailed member of the administration team would assign a daily camp schedule for the day. The activities could include camper choice, soccer, tennis, boating, arts and crafts, dance, swimming, dodgeball, basketball, ping pong, and for the little ones, many. Learn to swim for the first time at Camp Alvernia in addition to participation in age-appropriate aforementioned sports and age-specific games like parachute. Red Rover red light green light. In 2016, the camp began accepting three-year-olds in a new age group called the Pequots. Camp activities included traditional arts and crafts and swimming, but also had full-size basketball courts, tennis courts, beach volleyball, soccer, softball, and playing fields. Its specialty was boating, especially windsurfing. Campers would have boating, led by the famous brother Louis, as he gave an all-important safety talk followed by Q and A under the big shady tree on the sandy hill in front of the boathouse. He would tell stories and educate all campers on the importance of their PFD, personal flotation device. This was a square orange life jacket. During the boating period, Brother Louis would name one of his boating specialty counselors skilled in sailing who would stand up, assign the counselor a vessel, and all that were interested in going with that counselor would raise their hands. Brother Louis would select the campers that would go with that counselor and they would take off down the beach on their way. Lastly Brother Louis would assign the age group counselors typically to canoe with the campers not selected for sailing. There were many options for campers. They could canoe, kayak, windsurf, sail or go on the few larger sailboats 16 to 20 foot boats for a ride. Before 2000, there would also be field trips excursions to the Comac Roller Skating Rink, Vanderbilt Museum in Centerport 
the local arcade, and nearby beaches. Another important nostalgic element of camp was the garage where campers could visit the canteen, purchasing candy soda and other little favorites from pocket change their parents might give them throughout the week. Before 2000, and the loss of records in the 1990s, it's important to note that the Franciscan brothers were a collaborate but competitive athletic group of mentors. Camp Alvernia had a competitive softball team that traveled several times a summer to play against other camps. By 1990 the all-boy softball team recognized female talent and opened participation up to a few female players. Overall the leaders of the camp, both Franciscan brothers and Carroll family did a great job engaging both female and male campers with athletic and non-athletic activities, encouraging participation, and recognizing all campers' accomplishments. They recognized participation in all activities during the day with an elaborate points system accompanied by an elaborate record-keeping system. Points were awarded for any effort and participation called participation points. Counselors were charged with record keeping each day handing in the point sheets. Campers could earn additional points if their particular group won an assigned activity such as soccer over another group. For instance Seneca Girls Group 1 versus Seneca Girls Group 2. Period 3. There was even methodology set out to give points for ties. This point system bonded the individual groups even further as they learned to play fairly, work together, build character, and win and lose graciously. Campers could also earn individual additional points if they placed in the camp marathon, or placed in track and field races among all campers of their particular age and gender. All campers would earn participation points for participating. At Friday award ceremonies, first, fourth place ribbons were given out for track and field events, camper of the week in each group would be awarded a button and certificate. These points were cumulative over the course of the summer and impressively, year after year. There were milestones awards for points over cumulative years. The highest recognition of points would be 16,000 A's which would earn the camper a plaque, recognition at the award ceremony. Along the way, there were chevrons for milestones. This was arguably a great system because even the most non-athletic camper over time would earn these acknowledgements. This community spirit of cheering on others' various accomplishments was reinforced by the unique clapping system every Alvarian clap equaled two claps with a pause. One of the brothers, or camp director would typically make weekly awards in the 1980s and 1990s. They would ask all to hold their applause until the end and then depending on the age group and accomplishment they would give those campers a respective number of Alvernians. So they could ask for two and a half Alvernians which would be clap clap, pause, clap clap, pause, clap. This would sound impressive coming from several hundred campers in a dome, garage, or even on a hillside depending on where the awards ceremony was held that week. Upon the conclusion of the summer there was excitement and anticipation building up to a full afternoon of awards to conclude the summer. There were awards for every area of camp activity specialty for boys and girls in every respective group from Mohawk all the way to Seneca in the form of a bronze, silver, and gold medal including an overall best female and best male trophy in the category named after a Franciscan brother. The award recipient was decided upon by the counselors in those respective age groups based on performance throughout the summer. There were categories like boating, arts and crafts, soccer, softball, tennis, swimming, and track and field. The annual award ceremony for decades ended with camper slash athlete of the year, typically awarded to a Seneca of the oldest group, someone who was enrolled in the last session of the camp, and typically was there all summer. These were not necessarily requirements but obvious attributes of the winner. These campers were nominated and voted on by all the counselors. There was great anticipation of who would win the prestigious title every year and typically the individuals that were the 12 runner-ups and winners were campers of high drive and athleticism. In the summer of 2000, Camp Alvernia developed a course called Leadership Skills in Community Youth Recreation. The course was based in part on the camp's annual pre-camp orientation program, and participating camp counselors earn college credit. The Love of Learning Montessori Method School moved to the grounds of Camp Alvernia in September 2004. In the 1990s, many of the camp's records were thrown out, having suffered water damage. In 2010, the camp began a concerted effort to reconnect with former campers and counselors. In 2012, the camp built two new pools to provide additional space for recreational and instructional swim programs. The camp also conducts a greatly expanded boating program, with paddle boats, canoes, kayaks, stand-up paddle boards, and sailboats. The camp also offers a sailing certification program through U.S. Sailing. Thanks for watching.